All right. Well, hello, everybody. Uh, back again. Uh, it's been about eight days since we did the walk around of the Mercury XR7. Uh, the first video, if you want to go back and see that, uh, it shows what it was a complete walk around of the car just to show what we had, what we got, uh, the trunk, the interior, you know, some of the options it had, some of the different things, um, the engine, um, you know, the rust we had. But if you want to see a complete walk around, just go back to the video of it's basically part one of this car and uh, watch that video kind of explain everything that, that we did. But so now we're getting ready. I, I got to get this thing off my lift. I got other stuff I got to get in here. The biggest thing I want to do is just get this motor running. Um, and some of the comments that I've seen, I guess I'll address those. Um, there was some people saying that the uh, it does have tilt um, in the car if you push forward on the the uh, yeah, let me get the door open if you push forward on a turn signal and you know after I read that I come out here and tried it so I know I know what it's not going to do but you know this thing does not there's no mech if you look at the mechanism in there you know there's no mechanism in there you know to tilt forward. And I've tried pulling on the wheel, pulling down, and pushing back at the same time. But and the other thing is, I know on tilt comms they usually have like I don't know an indent or something that you know when this fold when this comes down it has a place to go, and that's just a solid solid cover. And uh, you know I've I've pushed on this thing hard to try to get it going. There is no tilt. I I hate to be the bearer of bad news, but there is no tilt. And the other thing was air condition. And <clears throat> there is no air condition either. So you got cool. This is your temperature. And then warm. So that's just cool, warm. That's your, you know, just your temperature control. And then heat and defrost and high, you know, low, high, medium fan. And that's it. There's no, there's no thing there for any air conditioner option. So, and I don't think it had air ever because it, it doesn't look like it's been taken off the engine or deleted. So, it was a delete air condition too so i guess them are weird options according to some of the comments you know then it's kind of weird to have you know no tilt no air but anyway that's a quick quick thing i just wanted to let you know i tried that the tilt and looked at the air conditioner and it it it, it don't have either so and then the other thing was you know is this a cleveland or a windsor and i don't know i, I looked at a lot of the comments a lot of People told me how to tell a difference, and I read online and did a lot, did research because I don't, I'm not a Ford man, so I don't know for sure. But what I did find out is, I guess the style of the valve cover is one one giveaway. Uh, it's not a squared valve cover, plus the number of bolts on the valve cover gives it away to be a, a Windsor. Um, the intake, the uh, the thermostat, the way it fits in the intake, it comes out the front of the intake. It's bolted on the front. Uh, I guess the Clevelands and some of the other engine families, they bolt in the top, like a more like a 350, you know, a Chevy 350. And uh, this one comes straight out the front. So that's another, another clue that it's a Windsor. And then the last thing that I read that, I mean, is the... Uh, exhaust manifolds bolts flush up to the head and the Cleveland and the other families have a it's bought it's it's got a flange that's probably about as thick as that that there on the exhaust manifold it's about that thick it's a it's a boss that stands out and then the manifold bolts onto that um, it doesn't bolt flush it's not a flush bolt up to the exhaust manifold so this is a, a flush bolt up and then there's no you know boss that stands out and then these bolt onto that so that's another clue that it's a windsor i tried finding the serial number or the casting number on this motor and now that's another thing i don't know there's five fifteen hundred different places that you know online says and to find the casting number. I could not find it. I looked, you know, down behind the starter, um, the middle of the passenger side up on the, the block. Um, you can't really get in here to see the front of the block. 
you can on this side, but I couldn't find anything down in there. So I don't know. I mean, I went down in there and scraped around some. And maybe when we get this cleaned up and power washed off, maybe we'll find it. But I just spent way too much time trying to find it. And it's really not that important. But um, I guess we can call this a Windsor. And uh, we'll just stick with that until we're proven different. Or somebody you know, gives me some other clue that it's not. Oh, the other thing, too, I read online is the way the water pump mounts. You know, the... So this is a big, a big spacer or whatever cover for the timing chain and then the water pump bolts onto that. So otherwise they just have a cover like a, kind of like a 350 Chevy and then that the water pump would bolt on kind of like that. So they are the ones I found out maybe totally wrong. And I, you know, I'm sure people in the comments can probably help me out too. But other than that, it really doesn't matter. I mean, here it says, you know, uh 351 cubic inch i haven't cleaned the rest of that off but i just didn't want to spend any more time trying to find a casting number right now i want to concentrate on getting this thing turned over get it running see if it's even going to move yeah, i don't even know if the transmission works assume it does but so i think right now the plan of attack is getting the spark plugs out getting some oil down in the cylinders I did say, I think on the first video, I did take a wrench and turn the motor. It is free. It's not, it's not, uh, froze up. And, uh, so that's a good sign, but I do want to put oil in the cylinders and rotate it, you know, one full revolution before we, we go cranking on it just to make sure. Let me get stuff around. We'll get the plug wires off. Hopefully they're going to come off without pulling apart and, uh, and get some oil and get it squirted in there and then figure out the fuel system, get it disconnected up here and uh, get a can mounted up there with my little pump and pour some fuel down the carburetor and say this thing will, even if we got spark, don't know. Cause you know, if you remember in the first video, there was a module sitting in the trunk. Hopefully that's a module or whatever the problem was that fixed it. So cross your fingers. Um, I'll bring it back when I get ready to take some of the spark plugs out and get oil in it. All right. Well, I think I'm going to take one of these out. And I think before I do that, I'm going to, I'm going to blow out because there's a lot of, there's a lot of garbage right there. I get something to cover that. Also, let's get rid of this thing here. This thing is, actually, I probably should have covered the carburetor before I did that. Let me get a. Let me get a towel here. All right. Get a towel in there. We'll do some. some and we'll pull that off of there. I do not want to fight that thing. Let me go around and hook that. It's junk anyway. Might as well get rid of it. All right. And much better but I don't know if you can see there's all kinds of all kinds of debris in here I, I want to get all that out before we start going around and and uh, putting dirt down in the cylinder I got my air hose here sticker off. I want to try to save that if I can. All right. Well, that's good enough for whose it is. Let's see if we can get one of these out and see what it was running like. Yeah. That came out pretty easy. Of course, I think the, the people who had this, um, I think they were farmers, so they, they I think they they took care of their machinery and I don't think their cars were any different than what they did with their other machinery. So, um, yeah, that's, it's, it's carbon, but that's to be expected really back in the, these days, you know, it depends on how long they've been in here 
uh, Autolite 26s. So, yeah, I mean, it's not bad. I don't know if you can see that completely, but they're black. But let's see what the rest of them look like. See if we can get some. Of them. Well, them come off easy, boy. Them look real. Them look actually pretty good. They look pretty good. So they're, yeah, they're gonna go in order. So I, I won't mix it up. So they'll stay in order. Those, those neat old things. And yeah, these come out easy. I don't know about anybody else. I know people probably disagree with me, but even on these tapered seats. Even on these tapered seats, spark plugs, I've always used anti-seize. Tapered seats or with a ceiling ring. Always done it. I know some people say, oh, you, you know, you shouldn't, you know, anti-seize your spark plug. I've done it for 30 plus years. Now, let's see. 30, yeah, yeah, 30 plus years. I've done it. Anytime I've done a spark plug change on my own cars, I've anti-seized them. And I have never had a problem, ever, not once. Now, that's the old cars. I don't know, this new stuff, you know, with the computer control stuff, that may screw it up, I don't know. But I have never had a problem, and I keep my old junk long enough that when I have to do spark plugs again, they come right out. So that's that's what I do. So yeah, that's that's about the same, same exact thing right there. Put that in there. But, you know, I have a friend that does the same thing. He's my age. Old farts. And uh, he's always anti seed his plugs. And to my knowledge, we have never had a problem with anything doing that. And, I mean, you can comment below and tell me if I'm drinking my bath water. But I've just, I've done it my whole life. And never had a problem. Never had problems with plugs coming back out either. Never had a problem with strip plugs. I've got a 97 Ford that's got the Titan engine in it. You know, the plugs go down in the, the top. And I, I heard them are a real bear. And my dad owned the truck and he passed away. And I got the truck. And first thing I did was take those out and anti seize them. Thank goodness they came out. Oh, well, that's being a pain in the butt. But yeah, and I don't have any problem with that one either. And that's that's a '97. So yeah, that one looks that one looks pretty much identical. So that's a, that's a good sign so far. I'll get one more out, and then I'll I'll go to the other side and take them out. I won't bore you with the other side because the other side's a little a little harder to get to than this side, and that's going to be too long. This is the easy side. I don't know if Ford engines, if if there's a cylinder that always causes problems or not. You know, some engines, you know, I had a Toyota SR5 and 84 and the back cylinder, I lost the piston skirt on it. And everybody told me that was a that can happen quite often with those, but that was that was one of the best running trucks I ever had All right, so that one looks pretty good, too. I mean as far as they're all the same so okay, I'll get the other side out and uh, I'll bring it back and we'll squirt some oil in it and put them back in and go from there All right, so I got them all out. I just wanted to kind of show you you know, they're in line, front to back, uh, passenger. And they all look pretty much the same. So, running rich. Running rich. And, uh, but nothing looks, you know, they all look the same. That's a good thing. One doesn't look different than the other. So, um, let me get my bottle of stuff. And, uh. We'll start squirting some oil in the hole and uh, get these back in and then work on the fuel line. All right, got all the 
got all the spark plugs out. I'm just gonna shoot some of this down the down the cylinder. It's hosed to cooperate. It's pretty curled. Let's see if I can get that in the hole. Okay. I'll just give it a squirt. something with this hose because that bent hose ain't working ha i know i keep junk around here it's an old nozzle off the end of a air blower that ought to help quite a bit oh yeah that's perfect First shot, what do you know? Maybe. Yeah, that one's clear down. All right, All right. let's go do the other side. Let's see if. Uh... Yeah, I have to have both hands. All right, I had to move my stool over here too because I'm too short. Especially with it being up on the lift. That's good. Oh, missed number one. Started a number, or started a second one back. Go back and get this guy. work all right well let me get the spark plug back in i'll save you the boredom of that but i'll get him back in get the plug wires back on and then uh we'll tackle the uh we'll tackle the fuel line i think i'm gonna get some blue gloves on and get that turd out of there all right let's get that thing out of here yeah. Okay. I'm tired of looking at that. Alright. Now well, you can continue on without looking at that thing all the time. Alright. Let's get these plugs. Get these plugs back in. do that. Hold on a minute. That one probably wouldn't really matter this time around, but I don't know how long it's going to be. I can't remember. I don't know if I got plugs for this or not because I got thinking about it. Whether we knew this was a Windsor or a Cleveland, I think when I first got it, oh, a little over, I mean, it's been a year or so ago. Um, I had figured out somehow it was a Windsor, I think, because I got some parts for it. But I can't remember what I did with the parts. I'm going to have to figure that out, too. I was thinking I got like a fuel pump, maybe, and a carburetor kit and some valve covers. Oh, that might have been for the old O's, too. I can't remember. Now, why can't I get that thing to start? Well, what is the deal with that? Really? 
it must be the anti seize on it. <laughs> I don't think it was that dry when it came out. But it sure is acting funny going back in. Yeah, well, nothing's ever, nothing's ever easy. I must not be holding my mouth right or something. I don't know what's going on. All right, I ain't figured it out, I'll bring it back. All right, I think I figured it out. I did this one, and I think it's this, the heat shield is holding it up, so I gotta push down on the heat shield to get them started. At least that was the problem with the back one. I think that's what this one is too. Yeah, yeah, gotta, that, my sockets hitting the bottom, the top, the, you know, the heat shield, and it wouldn't allow it to go straight in. Good grief. And now, rubber wants to keep sticking on the spark plugs. Yeah, you gotta push down on that heat shield some to get it started. I was worried about cross threading it and and uh, I didn't really want to use that. Come on. Good gravy. Use the ratchet to really start them but I could tell it was started. Of course. Well, I'll get that and I'll get the rest of the plugs in and I'll bring you back. All right, just about done. I didn't want to bore you with all them, but yeah, this is got one more to do here and we'll put the wires on and then we'll concentrate on the fuel line. But actually I want to, let's take a breaker bar and I can't remember, did I? Did we turn? No, I think we turn. I don't think we turned this all the way over, did we? Yeah, we might have already. <laughs> yeah, I can't remember. For some reason now I remember, I think we did. Just went a full turn, because I think I marked it in blue. Yeah, now I remember, yep. Oh well, this is, we needed to do this anyway. before we actually tried to fire it up. You guys have watched the video part before probably saying, yeah, you already did that. Well, it's been eight days, man. I've slept since then. But yeah, I do remember we put a blue mark, put a blue mark on the uh, pulley and I think we did spin it a complete turn. So I guess we won't have to do that anymore again. Let's pop those plug wires back on. You can't get them mixed up because I got them in order. At least I hope so. And I know you guys are probably screaming at me. Well, just change the plugs right now while you got them out. Well, I could have. But I just want to get it running. Make sure we don't have any serious problems before I put new stuff on here. This will tell us. I mean, them look good enough. They'll run good. Okay. Well, I think since we've already spun the motor, let's work on the, uh, let's work on getting the fuel line off of here and we'll get a hose off of here into a can. I'll put a can down here. And, um, I think I might sweep this out. Sweep this out and get rid of that thing. Get rid of that battery. I think I laid my arm in it. 
um, get rid of the battery, sweep this out, and then I'll get some hose and line around and we can get, uh, get a little fuel jug hooked up and get cranking on it. Okay, let me get that stuff around and I'll be back. All right, let's get this battery out of here and get some of that battery powder out of the way. Let's get some of that pushed into here. I don't want to see if I can get some of this off of here so I don't spill it all over my shop. I think maybe I'll grab the sweeper then and <clears throat> sweep it off. Yeah, that is some that is some build up there. Mmm, and tastes good too. Alright, I got my cut, I brought my strippers too. I'm gonna strip those back and strip them back so I can get the jump pack on it because these are going to get replaced. Of course, you know, the, the hot's always black. I don't know why. I guess it's whatever people has on hand, but all right. That thing should lift out of there. God, Lordy. Now I'm gonna show you I'm gonna sweep all this crap out of here and get all this crap swept out. This is where that I don't know if uh, in the first video they, there was I guess there was a possum living in here. Kind of looks that way. A nice little home down back in here and all across here I guess they cleaned it all up. So well most of it anyway. But I'm gonna let me grab the sweeper and. Spare you the agony of watching that, but I'm gonna get this swept out cleaner and then I'll try to round up a hose and a jug and my little fuel pump and uh, Some fuel and then I'll bring it back when I got everything ready to go. So All right, bring it back All right, got my jump pack here got those stripped back and uh, Got a bottle of two cycle oil or two cycle gas um so it's just not straight gas or you know carb cleaner or something trying to start this thing the first time but there's the rest of that crap that came out of there yeah nasty and that that old battery that'd be a good one because that i think it said march a april of 01 is where it's punched out at so yeah that'd be a good one to see if the myth of the internet is true that you can bring back dead batteries. Yeah, that'd be a miracle on that one, but might just keep it to try it. We'll never know. Anyway, let me get you set up here and I want to get the, uh, before I go cranking on this, I want to get the fuel line disconnected in case that fuel pump does work. I don't want to bring it up all that garbage from the, actually, you know what I should do is just take it off of the tank or at the, uh, fuel pump down there that way it won't suck anything out of the tank because I, I can smell that when we were under it looking under the underside you could smell that stuff wow was it bad I might just do that I might crawl under there and and unhook that down there um I should have done it while I was while I was up in the air but I think yeah I'm gonna crawl in there and take a look all right, so I don't know if you can see that very well, but it's just a it's just a rubber line, and it's hard as a rock too. Wow, I'm just gonna snip that. I'm gonna snip that off. It's probably gonna stink if there's any fuel up in it, which I doubt. I doubt there is. <laughs> but that way, it's not gonna suck any of that crap from the tank. All right, so yeah. It was just, I don't know. It probably was a 
I'd imagine that would have been a hard line that, well, I don't know, that pump's got a, yeah, I don't know. You, because that one right there, the one with the fitting on it, that goes up to the carburetor. So I guess that would be the high pressure side. This would be the suck side. But yeah, I guess that'll work. That was an easy fix. All right, back up top. Okay. Let's take this off. And let me see. I think I got my pliers on me. We'll take this off. I probably could just cut it. Well, I will. I'll cut it off these things. Both ends, I think. Right there. All right. Good. Now let's get this off of here. And cut this off. I think I got a piece of hose laying here that we're just going to put on there for now. Until we get the fuel pump, the little electric fuel pump hooked up. But right now, I'm just going to leave that like that. We're going to dump some down the carburetor there. Actually, no. Let's just crank it over first and see see what it sounds like. See if it... Uh, let's just see what it sounds like. Uh, the oil. I think the oil was good. I think it was maybe a little overfull. But I don't smell fuel. Of course, there was nothing in the... There was nothing in the uh, carburetor, that line, when I cut it. So it couldn't... Got not much fuel in. Nobody's tried to start yet. Yeah, it's over full. But I guess it'll be all right for now. Okay, well, I guess that's all we need to do just to... Oh, I got to get my... Uh, I got to get my homemade cranker on it here. I got a bunch of these buttons. I got a bunch of these buttons in a box of junk at the auction. And... Uh, yeah, they work good for starter buttons. Just put an end on it and an old sump pump cord. And uh, yeah, I used that on that 265 engine and I thought, man, that thing worked pretty good. So I gave it a little bit of extra stuff here instead of just bare wires. So I think we take this off and uh, it will go on there. That doesn't matter. And then the other one this is the battery side, so that'll go there. And that should engage the starter, I think. All right, let me get the, let's get the battery pack hooked up here. I'm pretty sure I'll have to have the key on, even with that like that. And I got my gas, ready to go. Put that there. All right, let's see what we got here. Well, I don't hear anything. Huh. Well, I guess that's good. Okay, I'm going to leave the key off. Doesn't really matter right now, but let's see if this thing will work. Uh, no. Okay, why not? Maybe I got this thing wired wrong. Okay, let me check that and I'll bring it back. Oh, yep, nope. Um, <laughs> it would help if you would put it on the right. This is normally closed. This is normally open. And it would help if I would put it across the contactor instead of the one beside it. So, let me get that thing. I thought I did such a neat job on that that screwed back on there oh 
Oh, well. That's my life. All right. Now let's just, let's, let's hook this back up once and just see before I tape it up again, see if this is, is right. All right, that'll do. All right, got her all taped up. That'll work. All right, get you unwound from here. Okay. I think, all right, let me, uh, let's see what it sounds like. Let's crank it over here. Yeah, it doesn't sound extremely bad except my jump pack's not charged. But it's got a little a little lope to it. But I think that just could be from setting. Let's try it again. Let me get you down here and take a closer look here. Well, I don't smell anything getting hot. I do see that down here, now that we're right here and got all the stuff off of it, that looks like that's been repaired because that's been that's been uh, taped. <sighs> huh? I don't know what I smell. Well, I guess. There. Let's check inside. That dome light's on. Down there. What was that? Huh. Ah, well, yeah. That works. I wonder what that clicking noise is. Probably a seatbelt or something. I don't hear it now. Uh oh. I think it's a bad connection. Yeah. Dome light goes off when you shut this door. Unbelievable. Let's, uh, let's check my... Could be just the ground. Whatever. Yeah, that's a little warm. All right, let's uh, let's put a little gas down it just to see what happens. Well, it helped if you had a hole in this bottle. I changed the lids on it. And it hold on one second. All right, changed the bottle, <laughs> put a new top on it, and forgot to cut it off. Well, that, that's probably going to be plenty. All right, let's see what happens. Let's just go for it. Well, it didn't fire right up. Oh, you know what? <laughs> I think we need a key on. Right. I don't know what that is. All right. Well. I hear the blower fan going. Or something's going. Why is that? Huh. Yeah, it's a seat belt. 
click it. Yep. Whatever that means. And the blower is running all the time. Why? Oh, it wasn't clear off on on off there. So now that's done. Close that up. All right. Keys on. Still no smoke. Let's uh now what do you think? I still think, yeah, 50-50. Oh, look at that. Holy cow. Holy cow. That is awesome. That is awesome. All right. It didn't sound real bad either. Let's put some more down there. To open the door here in a minute. I don't know about you guys, but I think that sounds pretty dang good. Pretty dang good. And it started <laughs> after I turned the key on. Yeah. <laughs> I got to open the door. Uh, hold on a minute. All right, now I'm anxious to get a little bottle on it and feed it some fuel. Maybe I'll just keep it running here for a minute. happy I am happy with that whoo that is awesome all right well I know we checked the coolant but I'm gonna make sure yeah, it's still good man that's awesome sitting since 03 it hasn't been started so that's pretty good that's Man, the belts, the belts didn't squawk or anything like that. So, all right, I'm going to work at getting a little jug hooked up. Yeah, just temporary anyway. Put this up here. Let's see. Flow. Flow that away. They don't have that much pressure anyway. But I don't feel like having it blow off and spewing fuel and I'm kind of hurrying up here because I'm kind of running out of evening. I'm going to get this thing running enough to see if the thermostat works and all right there's that. Now I have another piece of hose here we're going to put on this and stick it down in there. I think that'll reach there and I can just bring Hook this up down here. Hook this back up right by the gas. And that should, yeah. Let's see if it catches. All right, I decided to move my fuel a little bit farther out of the way here. Just, you know, in case. Give it a little fuel. If it starts, I'm going to try to hook up the fuel and uh, see if it'll. So I don't think. Well, let's plug it in once. Get the starter stuck in. I 
I think it's running off the fuel pump. Is that cracky? I think it is. And I got the starter to disengage. Good. Shut it off and uh, I think I go turn the key off now. Oh, brake lights on. Imagine that. All right, let me get some power steering fluid and I'll put it in there and shut everything off. For All right, now that I filled the power steering fluid up four gallons too much let's see if uh this will work again i'm not going to try to start it with the key here and see what happens but we'll see nice door okay i think I'm just going to give it just a little. I don't think it's going to need much. All right, good. Oh, the power steering sounds a little better. Yeah, unbelievable. I'm sure all that smoke dies. All the oil I put in each cylinder. But man, you're talking about running smooth. Wow, that is smooth. Yeah, it's really starting to bog now. But yeah, what do you expect? Unbelievable. Started like that after, what is that? 03 to 20, 20 years. 20 years sitting in that shed. Actually, it's running like they just parked it. That is awesome. Now I gotta go figure out what parts I got for when I got this thing a year or so ago and, and see what I got. I can't even remember. Woo. <laughs> That's good though. That means you got oil in the cylinder. I can probably let it down now. Kind of curious to see if there's it's gonna heat up or not, but it's too high. I can't see down in there. Let me uh, I'm gonna let it down here. Hold my breath. <laughs> Woo! Pretty good. A lot of oil and stuff burning off of it. Yeah, that sounds better than the old old. As far as when we first started it up. I'm get my flashlight out. Yeah. yeah, there is some flow coming right now. See it. We'll go get some antifreeze. And that radiator, that radiator looks pretty holy cow, look at that. Yeah, I'm gonna go get some radiator fluid and put it in there. Alright, see how good I am. 
Yeah, that was pretty easy though. Still feel the top radiator hose. Oh yeah, that thermostat's opened already. See if it'll kick down. Yeah, good. There you go. Yeah, I filled this thing way up too high. Whew, that looks dirty. Let's go see what we got inside. Let's see if the seat moves. That well, goes up and down. Well, it goes down. It don't go forward and backwards though. That's all right. Oh. Let's see what we got for lights. Well, no dash lights. Let's see what we got for gauges. What does it say? I forgot this thing had it. So, I don't know. It doesn't look like it's charging. Half a tank of, well, not quite half a tank of fuel. The temp is not, and the oil's not working. I'm pretty sure it's got oil pressure. Tack works. That's too bad the oil pressure don't work. Oh, well, we can go out and check that the horn work. Yep. All right. I mean, it's not, it's not getting loud on the top end, so I'm not too worried about it. it is, it's flowing. And I'm not even sure where we, there's a temp gauge right there. Let's wiggle that around and see if just corrosion. You can see that made a difference for the temp. Uh, nope, still the same. Alright, well, I think that's going to be all I'm going to run it right now. It, either it doesn't have a thermostat in it or it opened really quick because it's definitely warm and uh, even the exhaust sounds good I'll try to make I think the I'll come back and we'll get the oil changed get the oil changed and I'll try to find my cart I think I got a carburetor rebuild kit for it but I'm not sure I'm going to need it right away um I do want to get a filter for that right there. Right there on the car there. And uh, get a new oil filter and oil and see, put my test gauge on it, see if it is not. I mean, it may just be the gauges in there. This may be the, the uh, main connector here in the firewall. So, all right, well. I hope that was interesting. It could have been a lot worse. I think it's great. I want to get all that crap off the top of the engine too because I can smell it getting hot. So, all right. Uh, we'll get, I'll get some oil around, some filters. All right, let's shut it off. Oh, one thing I do want to do, I don't want to really hit the brakes. Well, I did brake light goes on and off I, don't know, I didn't even pop that cap but I want to see if it if the tranny goes into forward or reverse yep that's reverse yep that's drive oh that's good all right I'm good for I'm good for right now until we get some oil change I think maybe I did get a tranny a tranny filter too I can't remember that's been a year ago I slept since then so we'll uh disconnect this um, I'll get that stuff around get this stuff cleaned up I think what we're gonna do is 
maybe try to get that gas out of the tank I'll have to make a plan here after work one of these evenings and we'll get the uh, I don't know what to do first probably get the fuel out get the oil changed I don't know we'll wing it we'll just go whatever we feel like each day so all right well I guess that's it for right now I'll get stuff around and I'll bring it back okay well I rounded up I found the box of parts that I got and I did get some Rotella 1540 motor oil for it um, I had that here I use that and other stuff but and I I thought for sure I got an oil filter for this thing but I didn't so there's a box of parts I don't know if they're all it's a caliper bracket that is that is for my son's Honda yep I don't that's nothing I think them are either brakes for a Honda or my Saturn I drive I drive an old 97 Saturn you know hey 40 almost 40 miles a gallon so call me crazy this fuel pump I'm pretty sure I got a fuel pump for it I'm pretty sure this is the fuel pump for it yep which we probably aren't going to need right away but I'm going to change it um, I think these spark plugs these are for this car I'm pretty sure and what is under these oh, right oh that's for my 97 Ford pickup brake parts I think these them are brake parts for the uh, I think that's for our Impala if that is Saturn that is that's for this that is for this Yeah, I'm sure that that this is for for the uh, carburetor for this car for the Mercury. Them are definitely for Mercury, I would assume. So at least we got that much. That looks about it in this box. Brake parts and other stuff. O'Reilly. Okay, now let me get this other stuff that don't pertain to the car throw that back in there and we can get rid of this box all right well i guess the next thing is uh, i can't believe i don't have a fuel filter for this i mean an oil filter make a list i guess that's number one thing too but let's get it up in the air and get the oil drained out of it once here Guess I better put the hood down, eh? Because it just fits. I can take that light off now. That thing worked pretty good. Just no light for work. Put magnets on it and then zip stripped it up to the hood. Actually worked pretty good. All right, well, yeah, I think, is it just me, or is that the stupidest place in the world to have a drain plug? I mean, you can't, it, it's going to flow everywhere, let alone getting in there to get the plug out. I mean, why? That's, that's Ford. I mean... What what was wrong with the bottom of the pan? Oh, unbelievable. Now let's see he's got seven. I don't know what size it's supposed to be, but it's seven eight. Surely it's not metric. Maybe it could be. I want to try it. There's a seven eight. Let's try it. Get out of there. Alright, well, come out. That's all I care. But what a ridiculously stupid 
place to put an oil drain. Look at my thing, my drain pan under there. Now, where's it all going to go? Yeah. See if we can get that get the uh, oil filter off here at least we can get it off ready to go <laughs> all right please don't be stuck hard yeah good all right, hey I won't complain about that come back yeah what number is that 15 15 Napa and what's up there oh look at that well that's a different way of doing it it's engraved in the bottom of the filter 90,000 miles exactly on 322 of 03 <laughs> I don't know if you guys can see that but that's when it was done. So 90,000. I can't remember how much it said it had on it now, but 322 of 03. Cool. Never seen that done before, but I guess it stays over the years. All right. Let me go see if, uh, I doubt I got a filter out in my stash, but I'm going to go look. I get some in boxes of junk and any filter I get, I just keep. So all right, well, it's actually the next day I swung by after work, got a oil filter, and let's, I mean, it's drained out now. Um, let's get the plug back in. And the most handiest spot ever. Let me put you down here so you can. Yeah, it's pretty exciting putting a plug in, but I have both hands here to put the plug in. Since they put it in such a convenient spot. Put that in. We'll get the oil filter on. Let me get the light there. Okay. So I just went ahead and put the oil filter back on. Make sure you remember to write on the end of it. You know, the date and your mileage. And uh, yeah, so that's done. I think we're going to work on the fuel hose here. I was looking at the fuel hose, and I, never, I guess I didn't even notice that they had it zip-stripped to the old one. So that's the old fuel line. And uh, actually, this new one, they just used a piece of brake line because right there it is, and it's got a brake line fitting on it. And it just goes down, down along the frame here. Let me get this thing out of the way. How long? Down along the frame up to here and then of course I had to move that and now the brake lines dripping which whatever but right set this down right there is what they spliced it you see there right there they spliced it into the original line I would imagine and it looks like this is the old one right underneath it but I guess they didn't splice into that they just must have ran out of they must have run all the way back to the tank, so yeah, I don't know if that's good or bad, but I'm definitely going to have to, I'm going to have to get something on there because that's going to drip off. It is dripping off my lift already. Oh, that's making another mess on the floor. Let me get a can under that, and uh, I'll get this hose changed up here. I'm going to change that. Well, actually, before I change that hose, I'm going to add a piece of hose here and see if we can take my little pump that little fuel pump and get it started and pump some of that. See how much, I don't know, that tank sounded pretty full. Pump that empty if we can with that pump. All right, so I got that line hooked up, up there, run down into my little pump. And I got 
the negative hooked up on my jump pack. I haven't hooked up the positive yet. And we got it run down to the ground to that jug, which I don't think is going to be enough. But I primed the, I took the, uh, took my bottle of two cycle gas and held that hose up and squirted. It went in. So, I mean, it, I took the air hose a little earlier and just blew back in the tank. I couldn't hear anything, but when I put this, just about the whole bottle in, there's about that much left, about a half a bottle. Um, it took it pretty good, but I spilled half of it down my armpit and on the floor and on the lift and man, gas in the armpit, that stings. So let's see what happens if we hook up the hot wire to this thing and I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna let it, well, I'm gonna put it in the jug. I'm just gonna, let me, maybe set you down here for a second. This up here. I'll fold that wire over. All right, while well, it's running, Are we getting anything? No. Huh. What do I got backwards here? Because it's actually sucking on this end. Done. Yeah, sure. Got it stinking backwards. All right, hold on. I'll bring it back. <laughs> okay, well, that's a get for being in a hurry, being old, and being tired. Let's, uh, now let's see what happens when we hook this thing up. Come on. Come on. Oh, I hear something coming. Come on, baby. Come on. trying. Come on, give me some more better than that. Come on. Hopefully that's open to the back. Well, I like a little more than that. No, nothing, crud. Well, I wonder if, ah, oh, there's fuel in there. There's, I don't know, it might just, we're gonna pop this off back here and see, that needs to be changed anyway, but I swear I could have heard a, I heard an air leak back here. So let me check that out and I'll bring it back. All right, well, let's just cut this line off. So. I guess I can live with a drain plug when they put the, oops, when they put the uh, fuel sender and the uh, fuel pickup on the side of the tank like that. That makes it super easy. I can't believe it. How how easy that'd be to change if the sensor, or if that, if that uh, uh, sender's bad in here, I may change it if the tank's, Okay, but let's just cut this and see what we get out of here. Nothing. So, does that mean it's below... Does that mean it's below the pickup? I would think that pickup would go in here and then down towards the tank with a sock or something. But I got to get that old fuel out of there. It is so bad. So, let's try to... I guess let's reset... 
and I don't know if I can blow up in there. I can't reach it. Ah, oh, let me get my step stool. I'll get you blinded. Let me, uh, I want to see if I can blow up in there and see if I can blow through it, and make sure it's, it's open. Okay, let me see if. Oh, yeah. It's actually above. I hear an air leak too. When I did that, I can hear something. Might just be the vent. Could be. Might be the vent I hear venting, but. Okay, let me reset. And we're going to go and see if we can come to the back here and up to the up to the uh, tank, put a hose down the tank, see if we can siphon some of that out of there before I put some good in it. Hose run down in the tank. Got my ground wire hooked up. Gonna put the positive on. And I'm a little short on my hose, but let's see what happens. I got this container here. I can use this one to hold it for right now. Actually, yeah, we'll just do that if I hear it coming. Let's see if this just will go off on its own without having to prime it. Oh, here it comes. Holy cow. Wait. Oh, oh man, that stuff stinks. Holy crap. Woo. Beautiful stuff. Well, I'll make good fire starter. Wow. Man, if you could smell it. <laughs> that is. I'm glad I didn't get it on me, but I'm going to have to put you down here in a minute. Shut this off so I can get a bigger jug. But, uh, yeah. Well, it looks like motor oil. I am going to build a... We are going to stain our deck. I almost could use that to stain the deck with. I'm just kidding. But I gotta get crap. Okay, I gotta let you guys down. Well, let's see how this works. I got that jug on top of my ladder. Did a little OSHA regulation, you know, safety thing here. Um, I really didn't want the sparks right here by where I fill it. So, took another piece of my sump pump wire, two wire, and let's plug it in now. I'm gonna do this one handed. Oh, yeah. Wow. I mean, I don't know how many. I don't know what it would be from one of the pickups, you know, broke off down there. You'd think it would be the pickup would be closer to the bottom of the tank than up here. So my guess is either the tube is broke off or something because there, there's, I mean, it, I think it's full clearly, you know, here. I may be wrong. You guys would know where that picks up at. It just seems like an awful lot of wasted fuel. You can tell me I was sucking air already. There's just no way. Well. Uh. A lot of air for some reason. Don't know why. Cannot be that empty. All right, well, I don't know. It just doesn't sound empty, but I shake the car and I can't hear any splashing around in there, and I blow in that tube and I can't hear any gurgling. And I mean, I've siphoned in, into this thing and I just, this is all I got probably. Oh, I don't know if you can see. No, maybe oh, about that much. I guess you can see in there that much. Plus what we got in that, what a half a gallon there. So maybe two gallons. 
so I can bind that other one. So yeah, this is a two and a half gallon jug. So I'd say it's a gallon and a half, maybe, maybe a little more. So I guess that's what we got. All right. Well, I got this line changed. I still think there's fuel in here. I don't know what's going on, but worst comes to worst, we're going to take this thing off because it looks, it looks pretty decent. I think we can get it off and see what's going on down in there. But there's that line. I got that one. Yeah, drop the light. And we got this line back on up here. So the next thing I got to do is we'll let it down and get some gas in her and get some oil in it. And actually, as soon as I get it down, we'll put oil in it so I don't forget. So uh, we'll get that done. Okay, now I got it down. Let's uh, let's get some oil and put in it before I forget. Because <clears throat> I know how my mind is anymore. I just Shell Rotella T4. It's on sale. I use 1540 because it's got more, it's actually diesel oil, but uh, it works good for these older cars. It's got more cleaner and stuff in it, and it's like 19.99 at Napa right now, so that works for me. And I'm just going to run this through and then I'll probably change it again. I'd imagine it'll take all of it. Yeah, it should. <clears throat> probably more. Probably needs five. Probably should get the other one. We'll do that for now. At least it's in there. So if I forget, then it's good to go. All right. I think the next step is let me go get some fuel, put some fuel in the back. And then uh, I think what I want to do is get a piece of hose hook on this so i can come up here i'll i'll prime the prime the fuel pump and see if once i put gas in the in the tank i'll prime that and then we'll crank it over um and see if we can get something out of here and plus i can put it in a jug to begin with to clear all the crap out of them lines if they're full of crap so I'll get that around and bring it back. So as you can see, it's up in the air again. I went ahead and put an inline fuel filter right there before it gets to the pump, just for a little added protection. I'm sure that line is nasty and if a bunch of stuff comes out of the tank, it'll catch it there. So I'm gonna put it down and I'll get fuel in it and do some other things and then bring it back when we're ready to crank it over and see if we can get some gas out of this thing. All right, got my battery hooked up and I got my handy dandy starter button. Got that hooked up. Got the fuel line run into a bucket. And I don't know, I'm gonna prime this. I'm gonna prime this hose. Um, I don't know if that'll help or not, but we'll see. I'm just gonna squirt some down towards the uh, the fuel pump oh is that full oh, i can't hardly believe it but it is all right before it all runs out all right let's see what we got here 
Well, it's pumping. All right, that's good. All right, now I'm gonna put, I just wanted to see if that was gonna do anything. If it wasn't, I wasn't gonna waste putting gas in it, but I'm gonna run back there and probably waste five gallons of gas anyway, so I'll go do that. All right, so I've taken the, well, I looked down at the filter. We got some fuel in the filter, so it's, it's trying. But then I went back to the back and un, undone the line off the tank and it just barely dribbled out. So I'm pretty sure there's something with a pickup tube in the tank. But I got it jacked up here to push the fuel to that side and then it ran out really good. So let's see if we can get anything now. Um. I know there's fuel in that line that it poured out of there. I don't know why it's not pumping it up here. And it acts like the fuel pump is working because it actually pumped fuel up to the filter. Let's see if we can get it started. Just let it run a little bit again. All right. Let's see if I can fill the float bowl. drawing board and ponder on it a little bit all right so I'm trying to eliminate the line and the pump so I got uh, unhooked the fuel tank put a rubber hose on the line that goes up to the front down into that jug of gas we're gonna see if we can suck out of that gas can up to here if that's the case and it pumps good, I'll hook this hose back up and we'll run it on there for a while to see if it's going to work. But for right now, I'm going to fill this float bowl again and uh, <clears throat> crank it over and see if it'll, if it doesn't suck from that little tank back there up to here then I think we got a hole in the line but I blew in the end of that line up this way I could not blow any air through it so if it is it's a real pinhole but so let's see what happens here all right see we, yeah look at that yeah it's still in the tank I think see if we get good flow here This ain't good enough.
that tank back there. All right. Well, I think the line might be all right. Let's go see if we got any drips anywhere. I don't see any fuel running out. So yeah, my guess is that pickup on that tank. Man, I want to be able to get this thing off the lift and drive it a little bit. At least around the farm here. We might be able to. Um, I'm gonna pull that. I'm gonna take that unit out of the tank. Oh, the power steering pumps calmed down a little bit. Still as dirty as all get out. Sounds pretty good, really. All right, well, I really like to get this video out of this thing getting it started. But boy, I'd like to sure be able to drive it out of the shop on this, on this same video. So I'm going to work tonight and see if I can get, if I can somehow rig that, put a hose on it. it if it's rusted off and the pickup, you know, I'll clamp a hose on. Okay, let's see if we can get that. Let's see if we can get that sending unit out of there. I don't know if it's going to be easy or hard, but it looks like it won't be that bad. I think this goes this way. sure it goes that way that's all I put breakaway on it yeah it looks like yeah there's the stops so this piece has to go that way so yeah it's it's going the right way let me get another light on it all right. Well, that's off of there. It actually doesn't look that old. You know, the battery, I think I remember the battery was bought new in 01. And the oil filter was like 700 miles before they wrecked it. So they could have done this because it looks like they put lines on it too. I guess the question is now, is this going to come out of there? That should just pop right out of there, eh? I don't think that'll turn. It's probably just a gasket. And we're getting some gas there. I know that hose isn't plugged because I blew on it. I don't think we're get that much. Does that turn in there? I don't think so. Here it comes. Oh boy, here it comes. What are we going to have? Not much. Sending unit worked. Well, I got gas running everywhere. Well, the gas coming out of there is not that bad, so I don't think there was that much of the old crap in there, but it sure felt like it. it. Sure seemed like it too. For some reason. screen so that went in there 
That went in there like that. That went in there like that. That should have been close to the bottom of the tank. I don't know. Maybe that screen is plugged up worse than I think. Let's see if I can get a light on it. Well, I mean, I blew through it. Oh, this got to be nasty, but I'm going to blow through it again. Yeah, I can blow through it. Well, I'm going to take this over to the bench. I can't believe it's got that much gas in it. Let me see if I can reach the gas. Oh, yeah. Holy cow. Oh, that is full of sediment. At least right there it is. Look at this. Look at that. Holy cow. Well, that probably says why it ain't picking it up. I mean, I can feel, right? I mean, there's just, it's full of sediment. Okay, well, I guess we get to drop the tank. Yippee skippy. Well, at least we know what's wrong. I don't know if, yeah, we can't see in there, but it's too high right now. But yeah, that sediment is right, right there. And it's rust. And how bad it is, I don't know. I may let it down and take a gander in there. Oh, well, we got our answer. So, all right. Well, I guess that's it for now. All right. I think I changed my mind. I'm going to get this thing, get this sending unit put back in and uh, get a hose rigged up to come you know from the feed line up into the trunk and i'll put a can up there i want to get this thing moved plus i wanted to i want to be able to get out and drive it maybe a little but i can't see in that tank maybe maybe you guys can if i put it up in there and then i can look at the video but i don't know why there is so much sediment in the bottom i don't know if that's you can see that or not but that just looks terrible in there and i don't know why there would be so much sediment and the tank doesn't look you know that bad up on the side i don't know if that's showing up or not it's even focusing maybe not okay so i'll kind of go through what i did i didn't do a lot of this on camera just for time constraint but put the air cleaner back on um hook the battery up got some clamps on the fuel hose here just in case they blow off um and i'm just gonna leave the cap loose for right now <clears throat> and uh blew the engine off got all the sunflower seeds and mice poop and all that crap off of it yeah don't look too bad down in there now um got the uh Gas can. Well, I ran a hole. I'll tell you, show you what I did down here. So I just let me get the flashlight. Okay, so I just put the sending unit back in and uh, ran a hose and capped it off. And then the line that goes up front, right here, I uh, brought up through the the factory <laughs> access hole and up into the trunk into a fuel can and i think this should work so i tied a piece of rod to it just to keep it down in and then uh, stick that in there and i found a a uh, fuel cap that had a hole exactly the same size as the uh now watch it not fit my can i didn't check that yeah it'll fit screw onto the can and it's a pretty tight fit so it won't slosh out of there and 
Gave that a little breather. Yeah, we'll shut it. We didn't. Don't, don't look. All right. So I think I checked the carburetor and I pumped it a few times before I put the air cleaner back on and it actually squirts fuel in. So it should start fairly easy. And, uh, oh, let's, uh, let me get a big screwdriver here. Let me get a big screwdriver here. Let's pop this open. I know we lost the back brakes, but I just want to see what this looks like in here. Of course, fall down. Yeah, well, you know, that's not too bad. Yeah, the back one's front one's full looks like about the same color as the fuel so yeah well, that's that's good well, at least we got a little brakes I can't I'm just gonna drive around on the farm here up and down the lane and uh, up and down the lane a few times and uh, see how it drives back up make a few passes up and down the lane I can go down, I can go down that lane and down towards the barn and uh, yeah, I'll do a couple passes with it. So let's see if she'll fire up. Put that down, let's shut the hood. I'm only gonna go one notch just in case something happens. And Let's see, I should have primed that. I should have primed that uh, hose back there, but, ah, oh, well, let's see what happens here. Yeah, let's see if I can get this door shut at all so it doesn't fly open. Yeah, that's just going to be how it is. All right. Let's see how she starts, cold start. Give it a few pumps. There we go. I don't know if it'll suck enough fuel. Well, I assume I have not checked anywhere to see if we have oil pressure, but doesn't register. I know the fuel fuel gauge worked. I kind of tapped on it. Yeah. Okay. Well, I think I got front brakes. Well, hopefully they released, but let's see what she does. Let's put it in drive here. It goes in the drive. Yeah, I got, I got a little brakes on the front. Not much. All right. And sure, it's got to be raining. Yeah. I shut the hood. Yep. Check that before I left the barn, huh?
sitting for 20 years. I think it works pretty, pretty dad gum good. I'm gonna go back down the lane again. Too much in the hay field. It's starting to fog up in here. steering runs good too. Let's cut through here. Oh. Starting to fog up in here. Oh, let's just turn the let's turn the heater on. Maybe. Yeah, I thought it worked before. It does heat. temp gauge. I don't think the alternator is working either, but let's just go through here and get back to the shop. Oh, this thing does ride like a boat. Woo, that is getting warm. Wow. Alright. That's awesome. Get back it up here. I'll set the tripod and go by you a couple times.
Well, <laughs> I kind of made a mess here. I couldn't hold the brake, the front brakes wouldn't hold it. But yeah, it'll do a one wheel wonder. That's for sure. Well, so what do you think, guys? I think pretty good for 20 years sitting in the barn. Never moved. I think it's pretty good. I think this thing's going to clean up. Get some get some tires and rims on it. Find a door. Fix that. Maybe fix that. Everybody thinks I'm crazy, but I am going to look for a door if I can find one cheap enough. But, um, yeah. I think it looks pretty good. I know some of you probably thought it needed to go to the crusher, but you can't do that. You can't crush these cars. If I don't do it, you know, somebody else can fix it up. But, you know, what I do, what I, I, don't, I don't like, things are too shiny for me. I like this stuff. You get them cleaned up. You get them polished as much as you can. You leave them in the kind of the, the way you found it. Um, but clean it up. You know, if it needs carpet, yeah, you can put carpet in and stuff like that. But um, you can put rims on it and make it mechanically very sound. Um, I mean, that's what I like to do. I don't, I don't like to make trailer queens out of them. I'm not saying that that would be okay if somebody wanted to do it. It's just not what I do here at Rusty Relic Garage. I like, I like the old stuff and I like to keep it the way, you know, kind of the way you found it. And especially this one, I'm not planning on probably, I don't know. I may do, uh, may do more on it than what I think. I think it'd be fun to do the hot rod power tour. And I think this would be a this would be a pretty cool car to do it in because I'll never get one of my other car done. You know, that's a year away, but you know when you get my age, a year goes fast. A year goes by pretty fast. So well there it is guys. I hope you hope you enjoyed the video. Um, at least we got to take it for a drive. It's not perfect but it'll do for now it's good enough for whose it is so thanks for watching um and we'll see you next time see you